Hello and welcome back, my fellow Kislevites, heir of Carthage here, and we're going to continue our slaying campaign. Of course, we aren't quite there with Tsarina Katarin's sled, but we're not far away. It does come at skill point 23, which means that we don't have that much longer. Now, I am also working on getting a Rome 2 campaign started, and I actually started playing a little bit of that tonight, and I had this realization. Which wasn't really as much realization as a reminder that holy crap the campaign gameplay so i'm not talking about content because i love the rome time period and the content of it right i love that idea for a total war series and i like that about rome too but holy crap the quality of life in terms of controls ai campaign difficulty settings and stuff that we've gotten in warhammer 3 makes rome 2 into a pile of steaming dog crap like it is rough to play that right now in the campaign and that's a game i love i like rome too you know what i mean like i have i have some rosy colored glasses on um in terms of the way i feel about rome too uh and so yeah it's just man it's it's rough <laughs> it's rough um so dang anyway i'm not to get used to it i gotta get myself back into the mindset and i gotta find the right skill se setting here to, to put it on because again i'm not playing it to try and peacock some non-existent abilities this, of me being the world's best total war player or something like that um, but i do want to have something entertaining and i want to play a carthage campaign on it so i'll have to tinker with that and it will be coming soon for those of you who'd be interested in that but yeah it takes me a while to get used to it it's funny because playing rome remastered it actually feels a little more modern than rome 2 in some ways because they added all those latest and greatest little quality of life updates to it and it made a huge difference Made a big difference. So, interesting. Anyway, interesting to say the least. Uh, we can pick up a new Ottoman now, and... Where do I want to put them? We get way more income out of this area over here. If I pick up that 10% income thing, it would be pretty great. Let's go ahead and put him over here and see if we can boost the income in this area a little bit. Um, Northern World's Edge Mountains... Then our Ice Court character is coming along nicely. You all reminded me, oh, upkeep minus 30% for sleds? Oh my, could we have asked for anything more perfect for this campaign? That's fantastic. Um, someone reminded me that we need to get our Ice Court character too and name them Beyond Slay. And then someone was saying that Jon Snow was supposed to be a Druzina. And I, I don't guess it really matters too much to me what their name is. Um, uh, with John Slower the Druzina, but we can always come up with another name for the Druzina too. Like I'm sure we have tons of names, and you all can help me with that when we get to it. But this will be Beyond Slay. Did I? Did I? You all tell me if I screwed it up, I'll fix it. And uh, this will be uh, what Queen of Ice Pop. I don't know, something like that. Help me with the name if you think we need to do it. But we got Beyond Slay here, and we're gonna send her out. And we had a lot of other names come through. I think we had like Taylor. Was it say this? Slay Slayer Swift? I think was the next we're supposed to do for if I remember right. Slayer Swift. So apparently this has turned into a pop thing, which is terrible for me because I'm a curmudgeon old man who knows nothing about pop music or, for that matter, much of anything about music other than the, the occasion I do listen to music. It's usually classical stuff. Uh, but yeah, so I, I know nothing in that realm. I'll take your word for it, and you all can try and steer me in the correct direction. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll gladly admit that that is not what I am knowledgeable about. I am excited on this campaign, because we're getting close to the sled armies. And I think we're going to get to use one on the vampires here pretty soon, because I'm guessing the vampires are going to fight us, but I'm also worried that sooner or later... Chaos is going to rupture the northern lines here at Prague and through Kostalten. Um, and it's it's not going to be good. So, oh, look at this. Mother Ostankia goes down. But that means if we accept refugees, we now have access to Mother Ostankia as a legendary lord. Ah! Sweet. So, unfortunate that she died, but she was way over in Nagarond anyway. And so we will make use of her here. Mistress of Ice. What's the uh, garrison look like here? Not that great. None I'm going to let this army replenish me. for another turn because we're getting this bullcrap CA please thing here where we have all of our health back. I actually made a video out of that. We can make more CA please videos as necessary, but that one definitely felt like a necessity. 
We've got the mountains pretty well guarded here. We might be able to establish this army and go take Silver Pinnacle and maybe make it like our defensive position because then we would pick up the gemstones as well. And eventually we might be able to like take other settlements over here and give it to Karak Kadrin to let them guard it. Um, so we have options in terms of how we want to approach that. And at Kislev, we are at tier three and I'm trying to remind myself the buildings. We have that specialty building here which would be over here at tier three. Yeah, it's only Zargard. So some of you mentioned, Air, you want to build this where we can get the, the Ice Guard. Now, don't get me wrong, the Zargard are cool, but it's not the theme I'm going for. So the reason I didn't build this one immediately is because I really wanted it tier four because I really want the Ice Guard. Um, and normally you have to go all the way to tier um, five to get the Ice Guard with the Glaives. That's a benefit we get of owning one of these larger settlements or that particular settlement with that building. So that's what we're going to go for at the moment. We'll take the extra iron, probably. Let's go check over here. Yeah, we've got all the gold we can handle for now. Let's go ahead and take the extra iron here and a little bit of extra cash there. And there. We'll use that to knock our income up a notch or two, hopefully. And our Ice Court character has another question here. So we got Glacial Blast or Ice Shard Wonder. So we can get like a bombardment or an explosion. Um, let's do the bombardment, I guess. I don't remember which one of these is the best. It gives frostbite. I guess they're probably not terribly different one way or the other. We'll take ice shard. And let's end another turn so that we can get some of our movement points back. All right, we went through the turn in. The vampires offered me a non-aggression pact, which I rejected because they are already at odds with all the empire factions, and then that would make the empire factions dislike me if I was playing footsie with the, the vampires in diplomacy, and I want the empire factions to become friendly. And in fact, I was thinking, isn't there like a place in the tech tree where we can gain, improve empire relations? Yep, right here. Let's start working on that, because that could be worthwhile. Um, and so I'm going to take this army, and we're going to go attack the Griffinwood, because it's completely healed. I decide. Obviously, I learned a lesson, I hope, last time about how I attack a settlement of Wood Elves, especially if they have a ton of Treek in, but they don't, fortunately for us. I'm going to encircle them and see if they'll come out and attack me. But we will deal with them soon enough. They are not going to last long, that's for darn sure. Let's see, at Karak Raziak, we can go ahead and build up to the uh, the town, which I want to do. Because that will help me considerably, and that's going to leave us basically sitting in another turn end. I haven't moved Gotrek, but that's intentional at the moment. And whenever Gotrek and Felix leave, we can just hire Mother Ostankia for that. In fact, if Mother Ostankia is available, I might go ahead and recruit her... I am using a, um, or sorry, I'm not using a mod for this anymore. We have Boris and Mother Ostankia. And honestly, I think I'm going to go with Mother Ostankia. She is very powerful with the, the lore of hacks. She's already level 14 as well, but she's not available for four turns. But what we need to do with Boris, I can't remember if we reset his skill tree. Boris, we did not. So I'm going to go ahead and, and like just kick him um, so that we can replace his skill tree. Reborn. Okay, I know, I know, you're reborn. Good for you. All right, disband. Or, sorry, sorry, no, no, I'm doing it the wrong way. Wow, I'm dumb. All right, we got to go in here, and we got to reset all skill points, and then that's going to wound him. And we're going to do the same thing for Mother Ostankia when they come in so that I can kind of rebuild them the way that I want them built rather than the way AI did it. I'm glad CA added that as a feature. I mean, personally, I think when you confederate enemy lords, it should just offer it. I don't think you should have to wound them but whatever it, it's a solution that works like it's it's better than having had no option and having to use mods for it but to be fair i did like the mod better um but in any case it works and they added it to the game and i appreciate it. no you can't have a peace treaty come out and fight for it all right so they are going to come out and fight for it all right the battle's underway um i'm already moving up this flank with my sleds and I'm kind of on the case of some deep wood scouts. I'm trying to keep them from being able to operate. I've got Zarina Catter. I'm going to actually back her up just a little bit. I put her up front to do a little bit of magic. I'll still do a little bit of magic. Kind of torment these guys up front. I'm going to smash those swift shiver shards 
as quick as I can, and I have to say that as quick as I can as well so that I don't end up um, just tripping over my own words. So my sleds are actually kind of behind enemy lines at the moment, which is not great. I think I'm going to swing wide here with this arena to defend my bats and get into melee here. There's going to be quite a few enemy skirmishers that we're going to want to deal with, potentially. I'm going to see if I can skirt around these bears. And I'm going to swing Zarina Katarin around and try and get into their skirmishers. I've got one unit that's inside a range here and here. And then I'm going to target that tree with my... with my guns. Alright, Zarina Katarin can swing on in. There are baddies afoot. Namely those bears, so actually she can't swing in. So I'm going to swing down with my sleds now. Slow those bears down. And go ahead and pull Zarina Katarin away from that in inbound mess there. Okay. Let's pull farther back away from that mess. And here come the rats of the sleds. Alright, so I've got my sleds coming in. They're going to finish off to absolutely everything over here. I'm going to actually come over and throw a little bit of person's roar, a little bit of healing. And all of the enemy archers are now in severe trouble. And Katarin is also now free to come back and do her thing here. Awesome. All right, the sleds are getting hit by the regrouping swift shiver shards. But we cleared out the archers on this side, so I'm going to continue moving the sleds back and forth. Try and get maximum value out of them. Perfect. So things are going very, very well now for us. I'm going to move on over here and help clean up that fight. The bear sleds are immensely helpful. Look at this. Three bear sleds alive, and it's just over half health. Maybe you should take some of your own lesson there, C8. <laughs> all right, I'm going to end the battle here, and I'll see you all back on the map. Okay, uh, I am going to go ahead and replenish my troops Send just in case we need to be ready to fight quickly. Um, plus, we're still just sieging. We didn't actually take the settlement there, uh, but we did quite well. We should have earned some decent loot off of that as well. The Golden Knight will arrive at the rendezvous point. We completed that mission. Unlock the hero, the Golden Knight, so we can get Iron of Kislev, which gives diplomatic relations to other Kislev factions and global recruitment capacity of one, which is pretty cool. Or we get Immune to Psych for Zarkard and recruitment cost reduction for Ice Guard. Uh, I mean, we're going to use the Ice Guard, but I, I mean, this is just way more useful. The global recruitment capacity, I didn't really care about the other piece of it, but this one seems way more useful. So let's unlock the Golden, the Golden Knight. And I'm going to cut a unit of Kislevite warriors from this army and insert the Golden Knight into the army. And then we will immediately take Trika off the map. Wow, they got away with way more forces than they should have there. So we're going to occupy. And we now have control. Look, it did that same thing to my sleds right there. What a joke. It's so stupid. Um, it seems like that's got to be an easy fix, too. It's something to do with the auto-resolve, obviously, where it doesn't know when. Like, it's like a rounding error or something they have set up. Like, they don't have it set to round. Like, it rounds down instead of rounding up or something like that with these sleds. Like, it seems like some kind of very easy bit of programming to fix. Now, I've, I've not seen the skill tree on the Golden Knight yet, so I want to make sure I understand what's here. Golden Aegis. Chosen success. So she gets a bonus versus infantry and a big charge bonus. Golden Wall. Golden for Ursus Claw. Allegiance points gained. Kiss Love Unite. I mean, that's kind of a cool ability. I'm not going to lie. Like, Champion of Kiss Love. Let me see if there's anything good on the Enchanted Armor. Because I haven't looked at this yet since it came out. Zarina's Guardian. That one's a good one. This... I... 
this is pretty lame. And some people might be like, what are you talking about here? I mean, just, well, I mean, the Golden Knight is like a, like a, a Griffin Knight hero. And Wing Lancers and Griffin Knights are so underused for Kislev because they're just not very good. I mean, wouldn't it have been cool to have the Golden Knight have like some kind of upgrade tree here that gave like armor piercing to Griffin Knights later on and like a bonus versus infantry or something for the the um, Wing Lancers? Like, I mean, there's nothing here where the Golden Knight buffs knights like other cavalry units. Womp, 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 womp. I mean, I did, did I miss something? Stand your ground, like, ceremony. Yeah, I mean, so the, the, the Sar Guard get a bonus from them? I guess that's cool. And, and we get something for, but look, I, again, like, no bonuses or knights. <laughs> like, what? I mean, it's cool. Like, the, I mean, this this is neat, but like, there's multiple of these that influence Sargon. Like, like, why not put the Griffin Legion on here for something or something? I, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, it feels like an opportunity missed. I like the character model of the Golden Knight. I thought the lore behind the Golden Knight was cool. So it's a neat add in that sense, but like, it feels like a massive miss to have not done the most obvious thing there and have the Golden Knight buff your cavalry units. So that is rather strange, I have to I have to say. Very strange. Don't understand. Um, what is the heroic resilience? I guess I'll turn that one on first. Okay, all right, well, I'm a little disappointed. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I mean, I'm not like massively disappointed, but that, that is a little disappointing. Like I, overall, I'm happy with the way the CA reacted to Shadows of Change, but I that feels like a bit of an oversight there. And maybe they can add it later, and they should add it. Uh, if they can, because that feels like a huge miss if you don't. Okay, all right. Um, let's get back to things here. Try and get away from my disappointments. Um, let's open up. Passioned and wild-eyed. Okay. So, we've taken control of the Griffinwood. The Griffinwood is going to be a hard one to maintain because we're going to have a minus three control penalty. It's going to cost 100% more for all buildings. It's going to take 50% longer to construct everything. Recruitment takes longer and the income from the buildings is less. So it's not going to be the greatest place to try and hold on to. Um, it would be a somewhat appropriate place, though, to kind of make like a Mother Ostankia type home here. Growth and control... And then we can also get some income out of it. I mean, we can build this up to as high a tier as we can get here. Um, in any case, there we go. So we'll we'll try to hang on to the Griffinwood. I think we should be able to we'll put that control edict in there as well. And then Karak Ungor. We can now build up this to the highest level gold mine. And then we can put defenses in here so that we can try and hold said gold mine. And I'd also like to build this so that we can get extra supporters. And of course, I think for each of those battles, we gain supporters as well. We did, so that helped me gain a little bit of ground back on Kostalton. Um, and we're going to need to keep fighting, and so we'll probably want to declare war on the vampires. There's another gold mine. There's also the wine resource there. And honestly, I don't care if I give a little bit of this territory to the Empire, but I definitely want Castle Drakenhof. And I want wall and uh, ashen that wine and gold. I, I'd love to have Castle Templehof as well, but we we shall see. We shall see. We're going to attack them here very soon. Let's go check our adamant thing here. We've got an event that says investor, so we can get more income. Let's do that. So their income is going to be high in that province, and I want to milk it even further. Yeah, chaos is starting to potentially make some inroads over here. We're going to keep an eye out on the Ropsman clan, and I don't think our good friend Castalton is going to be able to hold out forever over there, but, you know, sometimes they do. We'll see. Let's end our turn. Right, we got a mission issued here to raise or sack a settlement belonging to the Great Orthodoxy? Like, why? So if we sack their settlement... Oh, to the following enemies. They don't have any enemies. What a mission. <laughs> so Razor Sack, there or no, the current total is zero. Okay, so it doesn't tell me the enemies. It just says that we have to do 
one, and I guess it's telling you, okay, that's a strange message. It was a little confusing, but maybe I'm just dumb, which is obviously very possible. Um, so we'll leave that one certainly up to your evaluation. Okay, we will have better control here soon, so we can probably hold on to the Griffin Wood. I can't stick around there forever anyway. I can put some defenses in it back off and, and increase our pottery output because I definitely have a vested interest in making more money. Um, the more money we have, money's power, and we can build up that second army more, or we could leave this small army just to guard the entrance here and make another army to help us against the vampires. We can go either way with that. Um, so we want to take advantage of both. So let's end another turn. Sweet. The Chaos Dwarves declared war on me. Fan-freaking-tastic. Um, so that happened right after I was intending to just let a turn in pass calmly. Now the Chaos Dwarves can move underground, so they could technically come straight in and assault like Karak Ungor. I'm going to keep an eye on them. Um, but I don't know whether the AI would be smart enough to do that, or whether they would potentially try and go through this Greenskin faction. I don't know what they're up to, but one way or the other, it means that we need to start building up the army that is currently sitting underneath... Um, and Boris is now ready for service, by the way. Um, he's been fully reset. We're still waiting on Mother Ostankia. One more turn, but I need to reset her skill points as well. This is going to be interesting, but I could take this army, for instance. We're going to want some armor-piercing capability, which we get from these guys, um, though there are definite downsides to them, too, because they don't have shields. Griffinwood. <laughs> I can't ignore the vampires either, so we're just going to have to start splitting to two fronts. In fact, I'm intending to attack the vampires. Treat me with the respect I deserve. If I go to Karl Franz and I say, hey, Friends Broski, how about a Come. trade agreement? How about military access? And, and, I shall join your war against Sylvania. And he's going to be like, yeah, that sounds really great. Um, and I'm going to be like, okay, well, is there any other way I can manipulate this real quick? Can we get, like... Okay, no, I was hoping I could get some kind of alliance, but we'll take this, and I'll take some money off of his hands, and we'll so go ahead and use this as an opportunity to secure a good relationship with the Reichland, which ultimately should help us. Um, but I don't know, Carl has a rough time surviving these days, so Others may never know. His loving name, but I am your true authority. Right, we're going to make a good agreement here with the Ropsman clan. Probably shouldn't be stealing their money because they need to be spending it on protecting themselves. Get a non-aggression pack going here with the uh, Great Orthodoxy. Alright. So, that gained us a little bit of extra income per turn, and we can now attack the vampires at Waldenhof. And then we can take Eschen, and then we can pressure Castle Drakenhof, ultimately. Castle Drakenhof has a significant garrison. Uh, one that you can't underestimate, so you, you do have to be careful. I'm going to put Strider on Zarina Katarin actually right now. Um, let's go ahead and end this turn. We should be getting very close to sled time with Zarina Katarin. She is on level 22. I believe we are one level away from her precious sled. And we have other sleds in the army. Then we just need some Ice Guard to finish the touches. Um, so I'm excited about that. Ice Guard are actually not impacted by this firing drills, which is unfortunate. What does it do on their tiers here? We'll need to get best of the court as well, but we should have plenty of skill points available. Let's go to the uh, Golden Knight, and we get Golden Aegis, which is going to melee defense and physical resistance, which is pretty great. Plus five melee when attacking chosen successor. Honestly, that's pretty sweet right there. Bonus versus infantry. Well, it's additional bonus versus infantry and a big charge bonus. Now see, Golden Knight's bonus versus infantry focus, which is kind of cool, makes that a specific type of hero again. How come she can't add that to like Griffin Legion? Or Winged Hussars, you know, that fight in her radius or something like that even. Like even if it's minor like that, but I still think it'd be cool if it added it like faction wide. Or even just in their army, that would be a nice touch. I, I would love to see something more like that. Um, let's do that, get some more control for it. Obersteyer is already... Oh, it's because Eschen... Schwarzhoff and, and Drakenhoff are in their own as well. Okay. So, Obersteyer. We could possibly leverage 
a relationship with the Empire by handing this over to them eventually, but I'm not going to do it right now. Just depends on what we feel like we need to do, ultimately. We are going to need to do some global recruitment out here, so it's a good thing we got that extra global recruitment capacity. And if I am going to be fighting Chaos Wars, I definitely want some sleds in my army. And I definitely want access to some more armor-piercing infantry. So we are going to have to work on that. I don't have a local recruitment. Oh, I do have access to Zargard. Which I totally forgot about. Stitch these two clowns. These guys don't have a shield, but they would certainly be more effective against Chaos Dwarf troops. These guys have an excellent shield, but would be far less effective in a melee against Chaos Dwarf troops. Okay, let's do that, because we, we definitely have to start building up that army a little. Uh, I'm not going to be able to make it probably fully elite. I don't know, maybe I'll be able to, though, but we, we definitely need to have defenses prepared. Um, to hold off the Chaos Dwarves at this point. And like I said, if we lose Gotrek and Felix, we've got that other hero we brought in. Okay, the vampires counterattacked me, because of course they're just going to attack a minor settlement where I am not, rather than do something that actually makes sense. See, that's annoying now, because now I have to double back and go retake that and hope they don't do it again, or I can push further into their territory, but then they might just come sacking across mine. Like, so it's a very idiotic move that the AI does when they do that, it's extremely annoying. Yeah, see, they just sacked it and ran off because they're complete imbeciles, and they're in enemy territory over here as well. You're lost, Mr. Wow. All right, well, no one ever accused the AI of making the smartest decisions when it came to trying to actually win a campaign. And I don't guess that accusation's going to start anytime soon. So I'm going to push further into their territory, since they won. foolishly acted that way. Right. That um, auto-resolve was actually a little bit unkind to me, but I don't see a large army down here in One Sylvania minute. that can punish me for it. And of course, we've lost almost all of our sleds um, because of the way that the stupid auto-resolve works there. Is there a mod that anybody has made that fixes that auto-resolve issue? Because if so, like I'm certainly considering going and activating it on this campaign, because that is going to be a little bit annoying to have to deal with Gotrek. over the long term. Right, so Gotrek's about to pick up a nice increase of capability to that army. Mother of Stankia was available. I almost wonder if we should recruit her down here and if we can just bring her in as like reinforcements for a few turns. But we need to redo her skill tree, so whatever. I'm just going to go ahead and recruit her here and then reset her skill points. Mother. No, no, yeah, reset skill points right there. All right, so we reset our skill points, and we will get her set up for battle. What are you thinking, AI? Like, what is this building? I mean, like, whatever. Okay, all right. So we're going to try and undo the mess there. We're catching up in the supporter fight because we're getting an extra two supporters for every battle we fight, which is certainly quite spectacular. And I'm now going to be able to do another upgrade here that'll help me with recruiting. And let's put some defenses in some of these outposts. And let's see. Next turn. I'm going to save a little bit of money so I can do some extra recruiting on the next turn. And let's just see what we can get out of the vampires for now. I guess I'll repair that building. I don't know. The vampires will probably just come right back and tear it down. But even if it just keeps their attention for a moment, that might be worth it. I just don't want them to take that settlement where I have to double back. And they may do that just because they know how annoying it's going to be if they do it. They certainly should have because now they're taking attrition rather than having captured that settlement and gotten a little bit of income and replenishment that they would have received. But instead, they just ran off into the wild, yeeting their way into the distance. Like the accomplishing who knows what. Zephbar wants military access. Um, I don't know why I should grant you that. There's no reason to. But maybe we can discuss something more useful. We don't have a common foe we're fighting. Sweet. The Ropsman clan was totally fine like two turns ago, and they just got completely destroyed by Norska. That is bad news. Yeah. 
they had all of these settlements just like moments ago. And the Ropsman clan is no more. Really cool. That's that's neat. Cool trick. All right. Well, <laughs> Mr. Boris Ursus has been summoned to duty. This is going to be interesting, folks. It is going to be interesting indeed. I've got to reduce the upkeep cost of his army as best I can. I might want lightning strike as much as I would love to have some replenishment. And we are about to have, or we do have another ice court character here. I need you all to name this character for me, by the way. Alright, so Maiden's Kiss, we want Ice Sheet. Death Frost, Scouting. Really one more point. Death Frost there. Okay. We're going to have to put together something to defend Kislev. This is going to get interesting. I really can't afford to throw a whole lot more troops at this right now either. It's just going to have to do, and honestly it should do, as long as we can fight the Chaos Dwarves where we need to. Wow, things are getting interesting very, very quickly here. Which means we need to wipe the vampires out, and we need to wipe them out in a big hurry. Um, we do not have time to play games with the vampires here. Like right now, for instance, I should have the sled and that sled, and I don't. Which is intensely frustrating. Let's see here. Armor plus 10 for the hero's army. Now that's pretty cool. I'll take that. 10 armor is not going to hurt anything. Sweet. Well, I think we're going to have to get aggressive on the vampires. I don't know where their armies are at, though. That's what worries me. Is if I push here and get aggressive, we could get pounded down. Oh, it's low casualty. Okay, I hate to make you all like not get to see this battle, but I'm it's low casualty auto resolve. So see it. Oh, we lost sleds. Now I've got to bring those back. How freaking annoying. Whatever. We got we got to hold a castle Drakenhof in a single turn. And it's hard to argue with that. We need to tear that down, though. Uh, this building is correct. And I want the wine here. But if we can just punish the vampires horribly bad really fast right now then we'll be in really good shape I have to wait two turns but I'm probably gonna have to wait to heal anyway so I gotta get my sleds back um Zarina Katarin now has her sled um so you can see that that's changed her damage profile into anti-infantry and armor piercing so we did gain the sled for Zarina Katarin there we're gonna go ahead and get the kitty cat call here so that we can summon the extra cat that's in our I mean. fight and then we want to go with Tenacity here. And then the Golden Knight. Let's look for another good skill point. Diplomatic relations with Kislev it just almost doesn't matter anymore because they're going to be dead within a few turns. 10% hit points and 15 armor is pretty fantastic. 5% uh, ward save for Zarina Katarin as well as herself. That one's also pretty good. Melee defense for herself and the Lord. Okay, I do like that, how it kind of like goes back and forth between her, the Lord and her. So I, that is kind of a cool mechanic. We'll take that. Um, let's go with the Golden Wall. That is a really good one. And let's take a look at this Adamant event. And we only have two of two still, but we have this event here. Traditionalist increases recruit rank for these units, and province first means extra control. I mean, we'll go with traditionalist. And let's go ahead and pop out of here. Oh my gosh, Wintertooth is just got an absolute freaking horde up here to my north. That is 100% terrifying, and <laughs> I don't know exactly how this is going to go. I'm going to try and protect my gold mine. With what little money I have, I'm going to skip the garrison thing and end another turn. Get my recruiting done and see if I can continue to push the vampires. Uh, we'll take a trade agreement with Kostalton. It's not worth much because he's not worth much. I think he's going to be in our legendary lord pool soon because he's about to be defeated. But hey, that's cool. At least we'll have all the legendary lords for Kislev in the same campaign, which we normally wouldn't accomplish because they would get wiped out before we ever had a chance to confederate them. So we will take this opportunity as it is. 
Let's see. Got through our turn in. There's a new plague. Fantastic. Irkulaz gets a plague. Gotrick, which means that's probably going to spread to Gotrick. Are you all fighting them? Greetings. They you are know, fighting them. Request, I'll hear it. Interesting. Okay. And I would love to have that gemstone mine. But I also probably cost me more to defend it than it might be worth at the moment. Okay, Winter Tooth did not come straight at me over here, which is I good, return. because that's going to give me some precious time to prepare Forces defense here. We are going to have to defend against Morska, though. For okay, let's go to Renown and Fear, because it's going to drop the upkeep cost Excellent. of his army further, so that's good. We've Motherland actually significantly dropped the cost of his army. And we'll want to probably get a few cheap Kislevite warriors just to kind of help fill the ranks here. And then we can recruit other things, but we'll start to flesh out Boris's army as best we can. Zarina Katarin needs another turn before she's ready to attack, and we'll go after Castle Templehof. And then... Friends of the Empire, let's go ahead and come. sign the defensive alliance here with right. the Empire. Oh, Vladdy Daddy. He is way behind enemy lines because he went and took Kent back. I will what an odd decision. And he took Nidling too, so we're going to have to take... Oh, yeah, he's got a couple of armies back there. So we are not done with the vampires. I was thinking we might wipe them out quickly, but that does not appear to be the case. So this is going to get a little crazier before it gets a little better. But we'll figure it out. We have managed worse, and we'll manage this. Uh, Beckhoffen might need some defensive capability because we could have Norskins coming down from the north. At least Arangrad's still under control of Kostalton, though again, doesn't look like for long. I wish this army could be over here and be useful to me at the moment, but I've got to worry about the Chaos Dwarves. Like, I can't... I can't turn away from that gold mine up there. It has to be protected. It's too valuable. Like, the income from that province is significant. Boy, this is going to be interesting. Our responsibility to what up, advantage. Carl? Um, says, you will join his war against that fact. Uh, no thanks. I'm good. Y you handle that war for now, Carl. I don't think I need a war against Norska. I already have one that's on my borders that I'm not quite ready for. So I doubt I would be of much benefit to you. All right, Mother of Stankia is ready for duty as well. Okay, it looks like the vampires are trying to make back for Castle Templehof. I can't reach it in a single turn, which is intensely frustrating. Which means the vampires will probably come and garrison the castle before I can get to it. I'm going to hide my presence there. I'm going to build the gold mine here because that'll help fund Orsa's continued spending here on his army. And I need some capability against Norska. Norska doesn't do a ton of skirmishing. These these guys might be better here because... Well, they have the armor piercing, but do I need the armor piercing? Like, the extra defense is kind of cool, too. They're fairly similar troops in a lot of ways. Except they end up being a little more resilient against missile fire, and we could end up having to fight Skaven with these guys, so that might be... Path. I'm going to go ahead and start recruiting some of them because, again, we're going to have to get a good solid army put together so we can push back against Norska. And, folks, that's going to be about all the time I have for now. Um, I hate to cut it off right now, but um, I do need to for the moment uh, because I am out of time to record tonight. I do hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, it was a good episode. We made some good progress. We've taken most of southern Sylvania, and we took a, a bit of whatever this one is here, Waldenhof. That one's northern Sylvania. Um, so we need to help the Empire. They're getting overpowered here. Uh, but if we can keep the pressure up on the Vampires, I think they'll be defeated soon because the Empire has large armies ready to go contend with them. And so hopefully we'll be in a good position to help the Empire finish off the Vampire threat and we'll consolidate a couple of gold mines and the wine and other stuff. And then once we have a secure flank down here, 
we can operate better to the north against the Norskins. And we do have the sled now as well, which we'll get to see in battle soon. Air of Carthage signing out, and I'll see you next time on our sleigh ride.